In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to play the main melody section from Teen Town by legendary bass player Jaco Pastorius. Teen Town was recorded back in 1976 when Jaco was with the band Weather Report, and it's gone on to become a classic bass piece that most bass players have a go at at some point. It's a perfect study piece for bass players, which means that it's something that you'll get together over an extended period of time, rather than being something that comes together quite quickly. In this lesson, I'm gonna be showing you my recommended fingerings for Teen Town. And these are not necessarily the fingerings that Jacko would have used, but to my mind, they're logical fingerings and they make for a fantastic workout for your fretting hand. If you wanna download my transcription of Teen Town with the fingerings, as well as the backing track, just make sure you click on the link below and that'll take you directly to the download page. The backing track is included at a variety of different tempos for you to work with. The original track is recorded at about 128 beats per minute, but we're going to be starting off at 90 beats per minute in this lesson. Okay, without any further ado, let's look at Teen Town. <laughs> Before we dive into the main melody, it's important to give some thought to the harmony that we're playing over. So the main melody of Teen Town is 16 bars long and it's played over a repeating four bar chord progression. Now all of the chords are dominant 13th chords, that is they're dominant chords, so dominant 7th chords, but with a 13th in as well. And that of course means that the, uh, the 9th and the 11th are also usable in the chord voicing and in the bass lines. So let's uh, think about the chords that we've got in Teen Town to begin with. So it starts with a C13 chord in the first bar, moves to an A13 chord in the second bar, then it moves to F13 in the third bar, and then D13 in the fourth bar. And that four bar sequence is repeated round and around. It's really important to be thinking about those chords as you're working through the melody. And as I'm teaching this melody, I'm gonna be highlighting all of the chord tones that Jacko uses in his line. And there's really quite a lot of them. Now, if you wanna get the sound of the progression into your head, there's some fairly simple voicings that we can play on the bass just to reflect that harmony. So to play the C13 chord, you can play this. So I'm playing the C at the 20th fret of the E string here. I've got the A at the 19th fret on the D string, and on the G string I'm playing the E at the 21st fret. Now that's a partial voicing. It doesn't fully reflect the chord because we don't have the dominant seventh in there, but we've got the root, the 13th, and the third. So it's a reasonably close approximation. We can move that down to A for the second chord. And then rather than moving the voicing down to F and D, uh, things start to get a little bit muddy down there if we do that. We're going to play an alternative voicing for those chords. So for the F13 chord, we're going to play this. So that's the F at the 20th fret on the A string. And then I've got the A and the D at the 19th frets of the D and G string. So I'm barring with my first finger there. So that gives me the root, the major third, and then on the top I've got the the sixth or the thirteenth. And we can take that voicing down to D for the D13 chord. Again, these are partial voicings, they don't include the seventh, so uh, they're just a good guide. So from the top, C13 to A13, F13 to D13. Now if you know Teen Town, you'll recognize that as the sound of the chord progression that we have throughout the intro and throughout the main melody section. Okay, let's dive into the first section of the melody. The two opening phrases of Teen Town, which occupy the first four bars, 
are arguably the two most difficult in the entire piece. So we're going to be taking these phrases and breaking them down into chunks. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the first phrase, which you'll find in bars one and two of the PDF transcription. So the first thing that we're going to play is this. This is the opening of the melody. Now it begins with a 16th note rest, so you don't come in until just after the downbeat of beat one. So in order to play this in the right place, if you just lightly tap on the string just before you play, that should put you into the right place. Now let's look at these notes. We're playing the C and the octave, back to the lower C, we go down to the B flat, back to the C, and then we play the G on the D string and then go back to the C. That's the first chunk of the, the, the first part of the melody. Now, this is already very heavy on chord tones. We've got the C, obviously, which is the root note of the chord, C13 chord. We've got the B flat, which is the minor seventh, and we've got the G, which, of course, is the fifth. That's our first part of the melody. Now, that's relatively simple to play, but the tricky thing is the string crossing, which happens at really quite a quick tempo when you, um, when you get the track up to speed. So it's really important in this early stage just to practice it very, very slowly. Okay, let's take a look at the second part of this riff. We're going to move from this opening phrase into this line. So I'm going to play a slide from D to E on the A string, and then on the, uh, on the D string I'm going to play, that's G, A, and G, and then I come back down to the A string and play A, sorry, E, D, and C sharp. put it with the first phrase, you get this. Now let's look at the notes. We've got the D, which is the ninth of the chord. Sliding into E, that gives us a major third. The G again is the fifth. A is the thirteenth. And then we end on this C sharp. Now the C sharp isn't part of the C13 chord, but it's the final note on the final 16th note subdivision of the first two bars. And what it's doing is preempting the change in the next bar to the A13 chord. So the C sharp is the third of the A13 chord, which is what we're going to get in the next in the next bar. So let's recap on what we've got so far. Try and see that as two separate chunks of the main riff. So the first part, the second part. Now let's do the third part. This is really quite simple. So this happens in the second bar where the chord is now changed to A13. And we're just going to play this. So we're playing A, seventh fret of the D string, coming down to F sharp. Ninth fret of the A string, and then we play the B twice on the E string. So as you end that phrase, very brief 16th note rest before you start that phrase. Now, when you're playing this, the chord has changed to A13. So we're playing A, which is now a root note. The F sharp is the 13th, and this B is the 9th. So again, very, very heavy in chord tones. Let's hear that riff one more time. Really quite a difficult riff to play, and it's very much worth spending time playing it at a very slow tempo and making sure all of the notes are clean 
and you know exactly where you're putting your fingers for every note. Okay, let's move on to the second riff. This riff is from bars three and four in the transcription. It's the second main riff in the piece, and in my opinion, it's the most difficult line in the entire track. So we're gonna break this down into chunks, just as we did with the previous riff. So we're working over an F13 chord in the first bar, and then we move to D13 in the second bar of the phrase. So let's take a look at the first chunk. We're gonna play this. Now again, this begins on the second 16th note of the B. So if you just lightly tap the string and then go into the phrase, that will place it on the right part of the beat for you. Let's take a look at the notes we're playing there. We start with a low F and then we play a slide. That's A flat into A. So the F is our root note, of course. We're sliding into the major third of the F13 chord. And then we're onto the A string, we play C, D, and C. That gives us the fifth and the thirteenth. That's the first part of the riff. When you speed it up, it sounds like that. Let's take a look at the second part. So, still in this hand position, we're going to play the F at the third fret of the D string. We play an open A. So another root and major third, of course. And then I recommend that you move your fretting hand up two frets so you can play G and G sharp. First and second fingers. So just four notes in this second chunk. That's the two chunks together. They follow directly on from each other. Okay, let's move into the third part of this, uh, this riff. We're going to position shift again. This time we're going to move and put the first finger on the A at the seventh fret of the A string. And we're going to play this phrase. Quite a few notes there. So first finger is on the A. We play the A. C at the tenth fret with the fourth finger. And then onto the G string for D. D sharp and E. That E is the first note in the fourth bar, so the chord changes to D13 at that point. Third finger on that E, of course, because we're using the finger per fret system here. And we're going to jump that finger down a fourth onto the, uh, onto the D string. Play the B. A. Two open D's. Now the benefit of playing uh, the position shift from into this position means that we can play a load of notes in one hand position. It's a little bit fiddly to do because your third finger has to do quite a bit of work here, but that's kind of the point of working on Teen Town. It's a really good workout for your fingers. Okay, let's put these phrases together. Let's think about the chord tones a little bit more in, the, in this phrase. So we came from F to A, root and third, as I said before. The G gives us a ninth in the F13 chord. We've got a chromatic passing note here, the G sharp. And that brings us up to A, which gives us another third. Up to the C, that gives us the fifth, so very, very strong in chord tones again. The D is the thirteenth. The D sharp is a chromatic passing note, not part of the chord or the scale, but it's just there as a passing note. And then we get to the D13 chord as we hit that, uh, hit that E. So we have a ninth, down to the B, which is the thirteenth. The A is the fifth. And then the open D, of course, is the root. So loads and loads of chord tones in there once again. Let's hear that riff again from the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
So once again, practice that very, very slowly. Think very carefully about your fingerings and don't be tempted to speed it up until you're absolutely fluent in playing that at a slow tempo. And you can start at whatever tempo is comfortable for you. That's the most difficult riff in the entire piece, in, in my opinion. So definitely worth taking your time with that one. Okay, let's move on to the next part of the song. After playing two really quite difficult riffs at the beginning of this piece, we're going to now look at three shorter riffs that are a little bit easier to play. So these occupy bars five, six, and seven. Let's take a look at bar number five first of all. So the chord is once again C13. We're going to play this phrase. Very short, very simple. This comes in on beat two of the bar. So we're going to slide into the E, the major third of the chord, just from a fret below the D sharp. Play the G, that gives us the fifth of the chord. And then down onto the D, which we play twice in a syncopated rhythm. That's a ninth. So a nice quick slide from that D sharp into that E. That's our phrase in bar number five. Nice and simple, a welcome relief after those first two phrases. In bar number six, the chord uh, changes now to A13, and we're gonna play this phrase. This is a little bit more involved. We're gonna start on the B at the second fret of the, uh, of the A string, and we're gonna walk up chromatically. So the B is the ninth of the A13 chord. The C is a chromatic passing note, and that brings us up to C sharp, which is the major third. I'm using condensed fingering at this point, so I've got four fingers covering three frets. So fingers one, two, and four. From there, we're gonna jump across to the G string and play the A, that's the root note of the chord. playing this part of the riff, this is the, the most difficult part really. First finger on that A, and then the fourth finger for the F sharp, and the third finger for the C sharp. Like that. That's quite fiddly, it's more difficult than it looks. And we're going to finish off this line with this little three note phrase. That's the B of the chord, uh, barring across to the second fret of the D string to get the E, and then back onto the C sharp, the major third, and applying some vibrato. Okay, that's the phrase that we have in bar number six. Another, not an easy phrase, but easier than the first two for sure. In bar seven, the chord changes to F13, and we're going to play this phrase. This comes in on beat two. Nice and simple, this one. We're going to play two open Ds. Those are the 13th of the chord. Down to the F, which is the fifth of the chord. Sorry, that's the C, which is the fifth of the chord. And then down to low F, which you play twice. Of course, that's the root. Quite straightforward. Much easier using the open string there rather than the fretted F. It's quite an awkward position jump there, so just the open string makes life a bit easier. Okay, it brings us to the end of bars five, six, and seven. Let's now move on to the next part of the riff. This phrase is from bars eight and nine, so we're finishing off the first group of four bars with those four chords that we talked about earlier and moving into the third time that chord sequence is played. So in bar number eight, the chord is D13 and we're playing this phrase. So let's break this down a little bit. This is actually quite a straightforward idea. 
This comes in uh, on beat two, although not directly on the beat, there's another 16th note rest on beat two, and then you come in directly afterwards. So if you tap the string on beat two, and then play directly afterwards, you should be in the right place. So in terms of what we're doing here, we're, we're just taking a basic major triad. We're taking the, the D, the root note, the F sharp, which is the major third, and the A, which is the fifth, and we're going to approach each one of those key chord tones with what we call a double chromatic approach, and that means playing into those notes from two frets below each time. So for the D, we're going to play C, C sharp, into the D. That's a double chromatic approach. As I said, it's offset by a semiquaver, so one, two, like that. We do the same thing on the next beat for the F sharp. So E, F, F sharp, and then on the next beat it's the same thing for the A. G, G sharp into the A. So we're just taking a basic major uh, arpeggio and playing double chromatic approaches into each one of those chord tones. There's a syncopated rhythm going on to make things interesting, but in terms of what's actually going on with the harmony, it's relatively straightforward. Now that brings us to the end of bar eight, um, towards the end of the, uh, the, the second playthrough of the, uh, the four bar sequence, if you like. And as we move into bar nine, the chord goes back to C13. And we're going to play this phrase. Very simple phrase. So, whereas I was using the the, uh, the condensed fingering system for that leg, I'm going to split back out into the um, uh, the finger per fret system here. So I'm covering frets three to six with fingers one, two, three, and four. I'm going to play this. That's E flat. Not a, not a chord tone, not even a scale tone, but it sounds really nice because it's the minor third briefly heard against a major chord. Down to the D, it gives us a ninth, and the C gives us a root note. And then we get an open A to finish off this short phrase. The A, of course, is the 13th. So if you put those two bars together, you get this. Three, four, one, two. relatively straightforward uh, part of the melody to play. This phrase is from bars 10, 11 and 12 in the transcription. So this brings us to the end of the third time through that four bar uh, chord sequence. So in the uh, in the first bar of this, uh, this riff, we're going to be over the A13 chord, and we're going to play this phrase. So again, let's break this down into chunks. We're playing the open A, onto the B, and then the C. Just treat that as the first chunk of the riff. That gives us an A root note for the A13 chord. The B is the ninth. C is a minor third, which you can always get away with over dominant chords, um, despite the major third in the backing. Always sounds good. It's heard briefly anyway, because we move instantly from there into a C sharp. So we play A, B, C, and then position shift, put your first finger on C sharp, and then we're gonna play chromatically from C sharp up to E. Like that. So all of this is on the A string. That's the first two parts of this riff. C sharp gives us the third of the chord. Uh, the D, not really part of the chord, it's from the underlying scale, but you could think of it as, a, um, as an eleventh. We've got a chromatic passing note uh, on the D sharp there, and then the E gives us the fifth. We're going to follow that by playing a descending chromatic approach to the seventh, so A uh, is the root note, of course. Passing note down to the G, that gives us the minor seventh. Okay, that gives us bar number 10. Moving into bar 11, the chord now changes to F13, and we play this riff. It's a really nice riff. So we're, uh, again, using the finger per fret system, I'm covering frets 7 to 10 now. 
and I'm going to play the E flat at the eighth fret of the G string. Second finger to the first, that's a pull off. That gives me the minor seventh of the chord to the 13th, E flat to D. Come down onto the C, fourth finger, 10th fret of the uh, D string. Back onto the G string, play the D twice more, flat the 13th again. Back down to the C. really nicely with the finger per fret system. Okay, let's put all of that together. And again. Quite a complex riff, this one. Certainly not as difficult as the opening two phrases, but there's a fair bit to get your head around here. Okay, that gives us uh, bars 10 and 11. As we move into bar 12, we've got something fairly simple to play. We're just going to do this. So this is A, C, and D. The chord has changed to D13 at this point, so we've got the fifth, which is the A, the minor seventh, which is C, onto the root note D. You can apply some vibrato onto that C. And then we finish off this bar by jumping into the upper register and playing two Cs, 17th fret of the G string. Now the timing of all of this, of course, is the key, and it's worth remembering which part of the beat each of these phrases comes in on. So if we just wind back to the beginning of this riff, this phrase here, this begins just at the very end of beat one of bar 10, so just before you land on beat two, that B should land on beat two. So the A is played at the very end of beat one. Um, <clears throat> coming into bar 12, that begins on the upbeat of beat one, so three, Four, one. And then those final two notes happen on the final two sixteenth notes of the bar. So the timing is everything here. If you're playing along with the track, of course, there is a synth bass on there as well, which will probably help keep you in place. Okay, uh, in the next uh, part of this video, we're going to look at the final section of this melody. Okay, so we're now looking at the final four bars of the melody from Teen Town. This is going to be bars 13 to 16 in the transcription. So the first phrase that we're going to be playing, this is in bar 13, the chord is uh, C13 at this point. Uh, we're going to play this phrase. Now this, on the face of it, it seems like a fairly simple thing to play, but it's the timing of it that's difficult. So this comes uh, at the very, very end of beat two literally just before beat three. So it's like one, two. That's the timing of it. Now the notes, we're playing G, A, G on the E string, and then C, D, C on the A string. So we're getting fifth, thirteenth, fifth, root, ninth, root, in terms of the, uh, the functions of the notes. That brings us to the end of that bar. Moving into bar 14, the chord now changes to A13, and we play this. So we're going to position shift upwards, finger per fret now, and we're going to cover frets 4 to 7. We play E, fourth finger on the E, seventh fret of the A string there. Going to bar across with that same finger to play the A at the seventh fret of the D string. That gives us the fifth and the root of the A13 chord. Uh, first finger can play the F sharp at the fourth fret, that's the 13th. Come down to D, non-chord tone, which brings us down onto C sharp. And then B, seventh fret of the uh, E string. That, that phrase can be a little bit tricky to play because of the bar that you have to play there at the 7th fret. You 
want nice clean notes. You don't want too much fret buzz. Okay, that's the phrase in the first part of uh, bar number 14. I'm going to finish this bar off by playing this line. This happens on beat four of the bar. And it's basically open G, gives us the seventh of the A13 chord. The E flat that we have here, it's like a sharp four, flat five kind of a sound, heard very, very briefly. Open D, down onto the C. Doesn't, none of these notes other than the G particularly fit that well with the A13 chord, but they're really preempting the next chord, which is F13, which they're leading directly into. They're much easier to explain these notes if you think of them as part of the F13 chord, in which case they would be the 9th, minor 7th, 13th, and the 5th of the F13 chord. Uh, this, this phrase leads directly into uh, bar 15, which is where the chord, as I said, changes to F13. And in that bar, we're just playing these three ascending notes, F, F sharp to G. It gives us the root of the chord, a chromatic passing note up to the ninth. And that's all we play in that bar, so it's relatively straightforward. And just to finish off the melody section, we have quite a lot of rests now. We don't come in again until the very end of, uh, of beat three of uh, bar 16. We're going to play this phrase. Just a simple sort of cap to the main melody, just finishes it off. That's a G, 17th fret of the D string, A, 14th fret of the G string, up to the C at the 17th fret. C is played twice. Now, of course, we're ending the melody in this part of the fingerboard, and then we need to repeat it, but we start very quickly again down here. So if you're playing the melody through, as you get into this phrase, just be very aware that as you play this, you need to make a very, very rapid position shift. Back down into the lower register to start the melody again for the second time. That's a big jump. Okay, that brings us to the end of the main melody of Teen Town. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed working through the main melody section of Teen Town with me in this lesson. Don't forget to click on the link below to download the PDF worksheet and the backing track, which is included at a variety of different tempos. And do please let me know in the comments below if you've got other tracks that you'd like to see me break down. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.